Doing dishes nor vacuuming will make you more attractive in the eyes of your beloved. It's the masculine traits that attract feminine energy. What? Boys, 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 time for some real man talk. I saw this video on Alex about 15 differences between men and boys. So I wanted to go through it and dissect each part and tell you whether it's yay or nay. Let's hit it. Number one, men get a life. At some point in a boy's journey, there comes a time when he must stop being his mother's child and get his own home and life. Boys must get some independence from their childhood home and fend for themselves. We mean a clean break, standing on your own two feet kind of independence. Sure, you might need a loan or a bit of help from time to time, but for the most part, those incidences should be fewer and fewer over the years. You'll be happier not living under anyone's shadow. This will be a life lived on your own terms. I totally agree with this point. Every single man has to have his own place. I see too many young males living under the roof of their parents because it's convenient. They get all meals prepped. They get their laundry done. They get their dishes done. Grocery shopping, bill payment, other home chores. And some of them may say that they're totally responsible for their own lives and take care of their own businesses. But the fact of the matter is that as long as you have your umbilical cord connected to your mother, you won't be able to spread your own wings and take a step into developing your own character. At the end of the day, you have to make your own bed. And this will become a great opportunity to get to know yourself and understand your strengths and weaknesses and what you have to work on. And yes, there are some examples where you have to stay at your parents' house, whether you are studying at university or doing some transitioning between jobs and need a place to stay for a while. Having that kind of a situation has to be a temporary solution. You cannot rely on your parents indefinitely. Heck, where are you going to bring the ladies? Come on now! A true leader of a man has to be able to be dropped in an ocean and still come out of it dry. Number 2. Men drop the swag for real qualities. It might seem important to walk the talk like you're part of a street gang, but at some point all the catcalling and crotch grabbing just makes you look like a young punk. Believe it or not, swag will only get you so far, and then you're going to have to engage in an adult conversation and be able to show you have your shit together to keep that girl or guy. There's also not a ton of return on investment on being on trend versus money in the bank. I don't know what the hell this point was about. I mean, I think they misinterpreted the word swag. Swag is a aura that emanates off you, the way you carry yourself. Your appearance, your swag is the number one stage in pre-screening your persona. This is the way people judge you and you have to make sure that your first impression is squeaky clean. The thing they described in the video is not being a boy with bad swag. It's about having low self-esteem. And it has nothing with age to do. It has everything with your self-accountability to do. And also they brought up catcalling? I mean, what the hell? It's 2020 up in this bitch. Who the hell catcalls? Yet again, it showcases lack of confidence. When you want to approach someone, just do it. Don't just spit out something that you know for sure will fail, making it confirmation bias. You know that it will fail so that you're safe in spewing something nonsensical because you know the outcome. You become nervous when you don't know what will happen. Fear is the consequence of unknown. Number three, men have clear intentions and the courage to communicate them. Facing tough conversations without skirting around the topic the way boys do. Men don't need to use jokes or lying when confronted with tough situations, and they don't resort to aggression or silence. It takes courage to build healthy relationships, and men have the honesty and truth it takes. Uh, I'm not sure if I agree with this. Of course you have to be straight with your intentions when it comes to business and partnership and your own friends. But when it comes to ladies, when it comes to <laughs> playing this game of love, there's no straight communication. These type of marketing tricks are directed towards making men very predictable and lost when it comes to ladies. Think about it. What I've been preaching on this channel, unpredictability is what makes the attraction to grow stronger. And being straight with your feelings, telling how you feel, is bullshit. It's a game, it's a delicate dance, and women want you to be able to know how to play this game. Also saying that men aren't aggressive nor silent 
is very vague when it comes to not taking responsibility over your own actions. Yes, it's not that good. But when you want to convey something in a very discreet manner, silence is your best bet. Also, we men have 10 to 17 times the amount of testosterone that women have. Of course, aggression is a package deal. The trick is to know how to regulate it. Like if you feel very raging, aggressive, you go to the gym and let out your energy there. When we are trying to achieve some kind of a result, yes, we have to be straight in our communication. But when it comes to seduction, attraction, desirability, getting it with girls, then having a straight communication will be your downfall. You have to learn to communicate non-verbally. Number four, men don't have time for games. It might seem fun to make a girl you like beg you to see her, but this is just childish narcissism. Blowing hot and cold, mind games, playing cat and mouse are mistakes made in boyhood. Men aren't afraid of their feelings and they're happy to express them when they like someone. They have the courage to share them and deal with the consequences, positive or negative. This is straight up bullshit. As I said previously, having this kind of attitude that I have to say something straight won't accomplish anything. Just one straight fact, men and women are totally different then why the hell should they communicate in the same manner? Men and women have different preferences when it comes to communication. And if you are too straight with your feelings, you won't leave any mysticism for her to uncover, which makes you dull, which makes you boring, which makes you non-desirable. Now let me ask you something. If hot and cold wouldn't be a viable way to get someone, why would they even bring this in this video? It exists purely because it works. Hot and cold is this delicate dance that I was talking about. This is a shaming tactic. If you play games, then you are a boy, you are not a man. But in reality, all people play. And women are much better at playing games than men. And I'm sitting here trying to help you to up your own game. Wearing your feelings on your sleeve will make you repel a lot of ladies. Telling how you feel gives away the power. And when you lose the power, you lose attraction. Because women would like to look up to their men if they want a true leader in a relationship. Number five, men don't seek validation. They're looking for partnership. Every time he does something like making the bed, you better notice. Or if he goes three days putting the toilet seat down, you better have a special meal prepared. Living alone is unbearable for a boy because they don't have anyone telling them what a big boy they are on the regular. Men, on the other hand, are looking for someone to share their life with. They aren't seeking a partner for validation or to split the bills. They want to share their life, values, and experiences with someone they love. If someone doesn't measure up to this, a man isn't afraid to be alone and still be able to hold his head up high. I mean, I don't know what this point should communicate really, but the most important part was about not seeking validation from anyone. That goes back to the point of responsibility and self-accountability. If you are seeking validation, you define your own self-worth from the outwardly feedback. Seeking validation makes you to appear as a weak man and nobody likes such. Number six, there's a lot more hair and men know what to do with it. The hell? Superficiality has nothing to do with manhood. Manhood sits up in here, it's a mindset. However you choose to groom your hair, it's up to you. I have my own opinion on the subject, but it's not that important. And if you would like to have my point of view, tell me in the commentary section. Number seven, men are happy to be equals. Oh Boys boy. need a mother to tell them what to do next or someone to push around so they feel important. Here we men go. don't have a need for a subordinate or a slave to feel strong or worthy. They know their true value and are secure in the role they play in the relationship. They aren't threatened by women, nor see a need to compete with them just because of their gender. Jesus Christ, just let me rebut this whole bullshit point with one simple thing. Men are meritocratic creatures. Competition is in our DNA and equals doesn't resonate within our gut. There has to be power dynamics in every relationship. It doesn't mean that you are a boss over somebody else. It just means that every man knows his own place. And at some point in time, he becomes a contender to gain 
higher position, higher status in that hierarchy. Also, it doesn't mean that he wants to compete with a woman, but having this egalitarian relationship won't do you any good. Our biological nature doesn't allow us to be attracted to this equalism. We have to have contrast. We have to have opposites to complement each other so that we can gain the most benefit from each other. That being said, it's not about being a tyrant. It's not about being a chauvinist. It's about knowing your place. And it's about women choosing you as a leader, if you're a submissive man, you will be miserable, you will be controlled, you will feel worthless. And that crap about being threatened by women, what the hell is that? Where did that come from? Why should a man be threatened by a woman? We're physically more dominant. This BS narrative about you can handle a strong, independent woman as me. It's not that men can't handle you. It's that men aren't attracted to you because you are being too masculine. A woman's power lies in her femininity, not becoming a man. A man's power lies in masculinity, not becoming a woman. Number eight, the stronger a man is, the gentler he can afford to be. This profound thought was penned by Albert Hubbard. Boys display clear traits that give away how insecure they really are. Loud, rude, and obnoxious, attention-grabbing behavior just smacks of their need for validation. Superficial gestures like draping a random, beautiful woman on their arm just to be noticed shows this need to be perceived as all that. A gentleman doesn't care what others think. He knows that he is responsible for his own happiness. Generally, I agree with this point because you have to be strong in your mindset. You have to be strong in your will, being able to control your emotions, which means basically being rational. Having such a mindset lets you with ease to handle stressful situations and be more compassionate. You don't engage in unnecessary arguments. You know your worth and there is no need of proving that to someone else. The second part of this point is that showcasing status is a part of the social game. You can be a dandy looking guy because you lack self-esteem. Or you can be a dandy looking guy because you know that it grants you a certain power and status and you want to signal outwardly a certain type of message. Number 9. Men make the most of all seven days of the week. Boys live for the weekend, counting down the days to the next big night out. You're either gearing up, binging, or recovering in this cycle. Men look at life as everything having a time and place. They accept that goals require forward planning and execution. Totally agree with this point. Because a majority of men today live in a YOLO mindset, which is actually very understandable because majority of males feel confused and don't have any purpose in life. So to become a man, you have to have the long-term mindset. You have to be willing to sacrifice this exact moment in order to gain something much bigger in the future. Being a bum, being a broke person one year, two years, five years in order to become somebody who will shake the world and make others to look up to you with awe, with disbelief, attributing your success to luck. And only you will know how much sacrifice it took for you to get where you are, to arrive to that same Number 10. point. Men are prepared and take initiative. Even if Valentine's Day, for example, means nothing to you, men understand that it might be special to their partner. They have the insight to realize that relationships are give and take, and this is an opportunity to give. Without being asked or coached through an entire plan, a man will look for ways to celebrate these events with his partner. Initiative means considering others and looking ahead. It's the difference between just planning to do something and actually doing it. You see, this is also one of those shaming tactics where they say that you have to please a woman. A man has to always please a woman. But you won't hear the opposite, that a woman has to please a man in a certain way. And the truth is, men are always looked up to, to take the initiative, because that's a masculine trait. But going back to previous points that I made, if you are always doing same things over and over again, taking initiatives and not getting any reciprocity. You are becoming too boring. Any kind of a relationship is a two-way street. And if your efforts aren't being responded to, you know what's up. 
Number 11. Delayed gratification is worth the wait to men. Boys might think that life's pleasure only happens in the present, but men know that future happiness unfolds as you sow into it. A man is working on his future finances today and doesn't always delay planning until tomorrow. Boys choose short-term gains because they haven't got the patience or self-control to see the long-term payout. This almost resonates with the previous point that they brought up in this video, where a man does something in every day of a week. Delayed gratification, long-term thinking, being a visionary, being a strategist is necessary for you as a man to hit your stride, to reach your potential. Everything worthy in this damn life takes time to build up. And remember that every opportunity to work on yourself that you turn down, you stray further away from your real goal. Number 12. Men know how to look after themselves. Duh! Number 13. Men aren't stuck on the idea of men jobs to feel masculine. Traditionally, when men left their mother's house, they had no choice but to acquire a wife. The reason of this archaic arrangement was so that a man could never assume the role of a carer, cleaner, or home helper. Modern men are more than happy to share the load when it comes to general life chores. They don't see a task as a male or female task, they just get on with the job. Being secure of your masculinity allows you the freedom to be an equal partner. Boys need to affirm their gender identity at every opportunity and would never consider doing girls' work. Good luck finding a partner in the 21st century with that attitude. And other shaming tactics, being secure in your masculinity. What the hell does that mean? Is there anyone saying being secure in your femininity? I think not. And good luck finding someone in this modern day if you're not being secure in your masculinity. What is this? Is it the kindergarten? What are we doing here? It's not the fact that you are doing your home chores that makes your girlfriend to become dripping, sopping wet. For you, it's totally other characteristics. Doing dishes nor vacuuming will make you more attractive in the eyes of your beloved. It's the masculine traits that attract feminine energy. Women are interested in humans. Men are interested in things. That's exactly why STEM fields are dominated by men and humanitarian fields are dominated by women. In egalitarian societies like Scandinavian countries, the need for typical gender roles grows stronger for every day. It shows that when you give freedom to choose to each gender, they always gravitate to something that is biologically predetermined in them long before they are born. And one more thing, a male nanny Number 14. Men want to please a woman, boys want women to please them. Men know when they've struck gold and will spend the rest of their lives investing in and protecting their precious gift. Boys run after anything that glitters and aren't satisfied if every girl they meet isn't after them. Men have no time for this and will only invest in true value. They know that love is the long game. They'll put in the real work needed to keep one special person happy, rather than tickle the fancy of a few women just to keep toying them along for the thrill of the chase. This is another bullshit here. So men struck gold, but women don't struck gold. They feel pity for men, thus they gave in as a consolation prize. What? This Hollywood and Disney narrative has to be the biggest hoax in the last 50-60 years. If your woman knows that nobody else wants you, she becomes very comfortable in her own position. And when she becomes comfortable, she gains much more power than she can handle. And there is a chance that she can become manipulative and control the relationship with sex. Number 15. Men want to be of substance in the world. Life isn't just about what you can get out of it, it's about what you can put into it and the type of positive difference you can make in this world. Totally agree. Man has to have a purpose in life so that they feel that they get some kind of a fulfillment out of this human experience. When a man feels lost, it becomes this existentially depressive state to be in. When you have something to look forward to, something to build up for, something to march towards, you feel so much more at ease and peace. A fulfilled man is a man who goes after greatness, both physically and mentally. Tell me your experience. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment. But for now, Osain. Out.